Hello YouTube, this is Dazza the Cameraman. Today is Monday the 6th of January 2014 and this is a follow-up video to the ongoing saga in the series with Catfish Glass and the um, Pole Shifting Moon or is it the Pole Shifting Earth? I still haven't figured that one out yet. Now yesterday the 5th of January um, the moon was four days old it was a thin waxing crescent it was a waxing crescent catfish glass and um, something occurred to me as I was looking at this and by Jove I think we might have cracked it this time but we'll see now I think catfish glass would agree with me that the Sun and the moon rise approximately in the east as we see here this is we're looking due east here this is set to my home location here in New Zealand we're looking due east and we can see the moon yesterday January the 5th at 11:35 a.m. and if we have a look the moon rose yesterday at 10:10 uh, 10, 10 a.m. that's local time daylight saving time and uh, of course it rose in the east approximately in the east and it traveled across the sky and if I pan around we can see the ecliptic line there of the Sun and now we're looking due west so I think that catfish glass would agree with me that the Sun and the moon set approximately west it depends on your latitude it depends on the time of the year and so on but generally we're talking about the Sun and the moon rising in the east and setting in the west okay so let's have another look at this see if we can figure this out so here is the moon's position at 11:35 a.m. yesterday January the 5th 2014 as seen from New Zealand now I'm going to zoom up on the moon so we can see the the phase of it and uh, you can see it there and we can see this waxing crescent what I'll do is I'll just turn off the daylight for a moment so that we can see more clearly and we can uh, clearly see that that thin waxing crescent if I put my cursor on it you can see the information on the left hand side there the moon a waxing crescent four days old okay and I'll just turn the daylight back on so we can see it's daytime now I think there's something else that catfish would agree with me about and that is that the illumination of the moon is caused of course by the Sun the illuminated crescent that we see is due to the Sun shining on the moon so here we have the Sun in the sky 11:35 a.m. shining down on the moon and illuminating that side that's why we only see a crescent because of the position of the moon in its orbit around the earth only part of the face of the moon that we can see is illuminated in fact at this time the uh, m most of the illuminated side is actually facing towards the, the Sun that we can't see alright so we agree that the Sun is shining on the moon and that is what illuminates the moon let's just zoom back on the moon again and just make sure let's just take a note of which side is up which side is illuminated okay there's the moon there it is I'll turn off the daylight again so we've got the illuminated side up facing the Sun just as it should okay and what does it say it's a waxing crescent not waning a waxing crescent because we're going to come back to that right let's turn the daylight back on again I'm sorry to labor the point but you know we've been having trouble trying to explain this one so now what we're going to do is we're going to speed time up as I've done before and we're going to watch the the moon crossing the sky I better push the play button on that first that's why it's not moving okay so we're going to watch the moon crossing the sky and the Sun there they go together and I'm panning around just as you as you would be if you were standing there with your camera with your video camera or whatever and you're following the moon you're going to swivel around you're not going to stand facing east and sort of do a backflip or something like that you're actually going to spin around and follow as it goes alright so here we go I'm going to stop that right there we can see that 
the sun and the moon are high in the sky. Remember I'm in the um, southern hemisphere so my view of the, the sun and the moon in the sky is opposite to the um, northern hemisphere. This mean that means that the sun and the moon cross my sky in the northern half of the sky. In the northern hemisphere of course the sun and the moon will cross the sky in the southern half of the sky depending on your latitude of course. Right. So here is the sun. If I move it over there you can see the relative position the moon is up high. If I put the moon over in the centre then the sun is up high. Okay, that's because of this sort of fish eye view that we've got. But let's have a look. Let's um, zoom in on the moon and see what's happening to our crescent. Ah, something strange has happened here, catfish. What's happened to the crescent? Let me hide the daylight. Hmm, that's funny because before the crescent was on the top, was it not? Now it's on the side. Now, what phase is the moon showing? Up on the left hand side, what does it say? It says it's a waxing crescent. Not a waning crescent, a waxing crescent. Okay, let's turn our daylight back on. Let's zoom back out again. And let's carry on as we were. Okay. We've got time 717 times the normal speed and we're going to follow the sun across the sky and the moon. I mean I can do this for the northern hemisphere as well. I can do it for your location catfish if you really want me to. Alright. So there is the sun heading down towards the western horizon. And this is summertime in New Zealand remember. Okay. So there is the sun, it's setting in the west southwest at this time. And we've got the moon up there. And what's going to happen when I zoom up on the moon? Let's have another look. And remember, we're in agreement that it is the sun that's shining on the moon that causes it to be illuminated, isn't it? Let's turn off the daylight. There it is and we've gone from the top being illuminated on the top to illuminated here and now it's illuminated here okay and what does it say on the left hand side it says it's a waxing crescent not a waning crescent a waxing crescent let's turn the daylight back on again let's zoom back out again now there's something I meant to show at the start of this which I forgot and I'll do it now angular separation between the sun and the moon. There we go, we're locked on the moon there. And we've got 53 degrees between the moon and the sun at this time. Okay, just to give you an idea. Remember, um, you know, we're 180 degrees from one side to the other, or 90 degrees for quarter of the sky. So we're just over quarter of the sky away from the sun to the moon here. So let's carry on, let's let the sun set. There goes the sun. I'll just change that back so I can move that round. There we go. The sun's setting and the moon's going down. And I'm going to stop this at 10.25. And let me click that on just a few more minutes. You'll see why in a minute. And I'll bring that back to not that it really matters. But right on 10.25. Okay. So it's 10.25 p.m. January the 5th, 2014, as seen from my location here in New Zealand. And I'm going to zoom in on the moon. I don't need to turn the daylight off this time because it's night time. And where is our crescent? It is right there. It's on the left hand side. And what does it say? Up in the left hand corner of the screen, it says that the moon is a waxing crescent not a waning crescent so it hasn't waxed and waned in 12 hours as you claim it has simply crossed the sky and what we're seeing is field rotation as I've explained to you many times already now I went out and filmed the moon last night at 10:25 p.m. local time let's have a look at that video Sunday 5th of January 2014 
10.25pm uh, New Zealand's uh, Daylight Saving Time. So there we can see the moon, we can see its features, we can see this large plain area here, we can see a crater there, we can see the phase of the moon, we can see it's a thin crescent, a waxing crescent. Now what happens if I compare it to the view in Starry Night Pro? Well look at that, it matches exactly. In fact if I toggle between the two we can see that those features, that plane and that crater that I pointed out and other features match exactly. Starry Night Pro is showing me the exact same view that I filmed at 10.25 p.m. from New Zealand just as I would expect it to. No trickery there. That's video straight from my video camera compared to what is in Starry Night. So one confirms the other. So remember when we started off at 11.25 a.m. on January 5, 2014 and we zoomed in on the moon we found that the crescent phase, the crescent of the moon, was at the top side of the moon pretty much, as we see it here. And then, let me just lock onto that, we'll center that. And as the moon traveled across the sky, we saw that phase change as it followed facing the sun as it went. Remember if I zoom out, let's have a look where the sun is. Remember this is daytime, I've got the daylight turned off. There is the sun, it's shining down on the moon. It's always going to be shining on the moon because that's how the moon is illuminated, from, direct from sunlight. That's the only way it can be illuminated. And as the sun and the moon cross the sky, we see that angle changing. Let me zoom in on the moon again as we go. We can see that angle is changing. There it goes, rolling over, following the sun, and this is because of field rotation. Coming up to, uh, it was 10.25 when I took the video. Nearly there. Here we go, 10.25. So we've gone from the crescent being at the top of the moon to down here and it's still a waxing crescent, it's not waning at all. So just to make that point again, when the thin waxing crescent is rising in the east as we see here, the illuminated part of the moon, the crescent, will be towards the top of the moon as we see it, facing the sun of course. And then about 12 hours later, if I change that from AM to PM, and we swing around to the west, and there is the moon. Of course, the sun is below the horizon, but it's still shining on the moon. Even though, it's, uh, even though the sun is below the horizon, of course, it's always shining on the moon. And that's why we can see the moon in the sky at night. And so there is the crescent down facing that way instead of at the top as it was before. So hopefully that explanation might finally clear it up for catfish. As always, do check out my Facebook discussion page, Voices of Reason to Explain X or Vortex. You'll find a link in the description area. Thank you for watching.